Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Things where I talk about random things and do unboxing videos and whatnot. So further to the video yesterday, uh, posted yesterday of unboxing this diecast model, just wanted to do another video, just an in-depth uh, tour, if you will, of this uh, of this diecast model of this time machine from Back to the Future Part Two. Uh, it's from Jada Toys. I uh, thought it was a Japanese company uh, for some reason, but I uh, found this uh, sticker in the bottom of the box, which said Diecast Company Netherlands. So I thought it was maybe a, a Dutch company or something, but I Googled it and it turns out it's a company based in California by two people uh, with Asian last names. Yeah, so as you can see, Pacific time, of course, uh, you know, California is uh, the, in the Pacific time zone. You got the Universal Studios logo right there. This ET, huh? Anyways, yes, just wanted to clear that up. It's an American company. Yeah, so this is the part two time machine, the DeLorean. The DeLorean itself is uh, actually a very cool looking car. You have the stainless steel uh, look. Kind of reminds me of Cybertruck, actually. Tesla Cybertruck, which has not been released uh, as of this date. Um... Yeah, but I think it's uh, Elon Musk definitely got inspiration from this DeLorean. DeLorean is actually made by this uh, person, John DeLorean. He uh, used his last name to uh, name the company. He actually used to work for um, GMC, the General Motors company. But then he got really ambitious and uh, founded this DeLorean company. I think this is DMC-12 or something like that, the actual car model. But yeah, Back to the Future was released in 1985, the original movie. Back to the Future 2 uh, was not released uh, for about four or five years. So 1989, 1990 kind of deal. But yeah, this is a very iconic movie. I recently rewatched the movie. Part one and part two, and it's the plot and everything. I mean, the how it was shot and how the actors uh, acted. Everything was just perfect. No wonder it's a classic movie. I mean, uh, if you have if you haven't had a chance to watch it with your kids or or yourself, you know, or you haven't watched it for a long time, I say give it a shot. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's actually worthwhile to watch it again or watch it for the first time. For sure. Yeah, it's on Netflix right now, streaming. And, uh, well, part one was, and part two I had to watch it on Amazon Prime, but it was available there. Yeah, so 1985, that's when the character of Marty McFly, played by uh, Michael J. Fox, travels back in time. That, that was a present for him. And... Uh, yeah, everything about this movie screams uh, the 80s. I mean, just uh, DeLorean is an iconic car from the 80s. Very futuristic. But uh, came out in the 80s, mid 80s. And the logo, look at the logo. The color scheme and everything. It's just 80s. <laughs> yeah, it's so that's that. Yeah, I just wanted to do the unboxing or um, more in-depth tour of this car. So I showed you yesterday a little bit. This is where Dr. Brown puts in banana peels and beer, leftover beer from trash can and also throws in the beer can itself to uh, fuel this time machine, uh, which is capability to fly. It has to hit 80 above 88 miles per hour 
to activate the uh, the time machine. But uh, remember part one. That was, this car actually is actually I wanted to mention that this car is actually featured. Uh, this version of the car, time machine, was featured in the original movie as well. At the ending scene where Doctor Brown comes back from the future to grab Marty McFly and his girlfriend. So this version of the car wasn't was the main main uh, model for Back to the Future Part Two, but also was in uh, Back to the Future the original movie. Yeah. So like I said yesterday, if you uh, push this button right here, kind of looks dirty. I mean, it doesn't have like the perfect uh, painting and everything, but it actually gives it more of a realistic feel to it. This thing right here, it looks like a real wire, all plastic, but you know, enough detail. I know there's tons of other, you know, models of this time machine because it's just way too iconic out there with way more detail and way more expensive than this. There's one that uh, levitates in the air and uh, it has like all the, like the flux capacitor. Uh, lighting up and everything, all the details. This is inside, it's just all plastic, all gray. You know, as you can see, the seats inside are gray as well, it's just plastic. And there's no lighting function, nothing like that. But like I keep saying, there's enough detail for the price, it's a great deal, I think. There you see in the back between the seat, the flux capacitor. Yeah, I had to pause the video for a little bit uh, because uh, someone messaged me. But yeah, I was uh, just commenting on, trying to comment on the, you know, how detailed this thing was. And, you know, one thing I really like about this is the paint job done. Just have this, uh, you know, stainless steel look kind of that, that gives a, I probably mentioned this, but the Tesla Cybertruck. I probably had uh, inspiration from this DeLorean. Must have. I mean, there's so many uh, similarities in the design cues and the material that is used. Makes it so futuristic. I mean, coming from the mid 80s, this was, uh, the design is just, I mean, just, uh, just a classic. It's timeless. Of course, it is missing the DMC logo, the DeLorean Motor Company logo. DeLorean is actually the last name of a person who founded the company, and uh, who uh, yeah thought of this vehicle and uh, kind of took the action to uh, found his uh, own company and everything. John DeLorean, I think, is the name. And there's a whole documentary on Netflix about this guy uh, developing this vehicle. He actually used to work for GMC, the General Motors company. Uh, uh, very charismatic, attractive, and, you know, all of that. This guy was, uh, but he actually watched it a little bit. And he was going through a midlife crisis and he had to uh, prove himself by developing this uh, very futuristic vehicle supposedly uh, be a, a, affordable for young people. There you see it's lev levitating in the air. We're trying to have that look. You got that stand there, which is, uh, yeah, I don't have the screwdriver with me, but if you look underneath, Through that hole, there's a couple screws there that you need to unscrew to unmount this from this uh, cardboard cardboard casing. Yeah, so yeah, one thing I 
when I rewatched the movie, I was surprised how how much Japanese influence it, the USA had uh, during the eighties. I mean, the video camera that it was carrying was uh, Japanese, a JVC. Uh, Marty McFly uh, the, was carrying was JVC, which is Japanese, and the uh, stopwatch was Japanese as well, like Seiko, I think it was, and I was kind of surprised. And the four by four he uh, dreamt of having the black one that was from Toyota. So nowadays people, you know, nowadays people know that uh, Japanese vehicles are really popular, but back in the eighties. I mean, coming from Korea, I, I come from Korea. I didn't grow up here in the North North America. I came here when I was, you know, 11 years old. So I didn't know how much uh, influence that Japanese products had on the everyday living. And you could see that uh, through the movies. And I was very surprised. Nowadays, you, you get a, the Korean products are getting uh, increasing, spot, uh, you know, attention and spotlight. But that was just, you know, recent years. But Japanese, you know, I always couldn't understand how, you know, once enemies, I mean, Japanese people were bombing uh, the uh, Pearl Harbor. How the enemies came to love each other's culture, I guess. It's because they share the, uh, share the, uh, what do you call it? passion for enthusiasm and culture there you go that's the bottom of the car bottom of the vehicle like I mentioned yesterday that's a very cool function the wheels actually flip they do turn it's all plastic there's it's no rubber but you know it does the job for sure this is more for presentation purposes, so I mean, that's just enough detail. But yeah, excuse me, uh, going like jumping from one topic to another. But DeLorean Motor Company, I wish it had the emblem, but uh, I guess the trademark uh, uh, issues got in the way of Jada Toys having that logo on this vehicle uh, model. But yeah. The light feature is just amazing. Very cool vehicle. Let's try to see the back of this if I can. Let me pause the video. There you go. I just unmounted it. A couple screws there from the bottom. Using my Leatherman, which is uh, always very handy. Yeah, I took it out and. Uh, yeah, here it is, uh, the back. Oh, I didn't expect this. It even has the uh, barcode orange license plate. <laughs> that is very cool. The exhaust pipes. And colored as well. Wow. That is just amazing, man. Looks really cool for the back. Put it to the side. And as I, I was actually surprised when I took it out from of the mount. Get out from the mount. Uh, it has a heft to it. It's a, uh, you know, it has a significant weight to it too. So yeah, this is very. I'm very uh, impressed with this thing. There's a side profile there. Very impressed. The front. The top. I'm gonna try the door as well. Let me just pause it a little bit. Yeah, so I cut this part from the bottom. 
We'll have to show you the bottom as well. That's the bottom. That's where the battery goes for the light feature. One twenty-four. Okay, so it is not one eighteen. It's one twenty-four. You got the Jada Oval logo there. Jada Toys Incorporated. There's that exhaust. I love that it has the orange barcode license plate because some of the diecast models online that I've seen on YouTube didn't have that and that was the only thing that I was missing. Yeah, I wish you had the uh, DMC logo on there. That would be perfect, but, you know, it's not a biggie. Let me try to flip all the wheels. That's how it looks. Very cool. Oh man. In the moment of truth, let me try to open the door. Wow. Look at that. Look at how the light reflects from the door. Isn't that so awesome? This is so well made. So well made. That is inside the door panel. Try to focus. Those are the details. Wow. Very nice detail. Very nice detail. Look at that. Gauge cluster. The steering wheel. Every little bit of detail that uh, you wouldn't expect from a product this price. Paid about $60 Canadian. I know when it was first released, it was way cheaper, but still a very good deal. Oh man, I'm loving this. Yeah. What about underneath? Does it have the pedals too? Can't really tell, but... Yeah, that's the driver's seat. Let me see it with both of the doors. Open. Man, isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? That is very cool. Okay, if you move to this side. Wow. That is so much detail. That I did not expect. probably see the flux capacitor from this angle yeah you see that yeah this is very well made I'm very impressed super impressed yeah so there you go guys hope you enjoyed it as much as I did I'm very impressed with this product and uh, yeah I'm probably gonna mount it back on this and display it as a, actually, let me do that and show you guys. Let me